Well, good morning, everybody. I, uh, I'm back. I was uh, off last week. You may or may not have noticed because we ran the stream. It was fully pre-recorded. It'll be interesting to hear how that was for you uh, at some point. And uh, if, if you noticed, <laughs> and you can tell I'm, it's very much live today because I'm already having glitches and problems and oh boy, good times. Um, so uh, welcome to our, I think it's our 16th service, uh, streaming live from Halliburton United Church Library. Uh, and so welcome, and welcome to anybody who may be here, um, you know, just picking it up to see what we're doing, what we're up to. I'm really happy that some people from faraway lands like Lindsay and Wales and Joy in Peterborough and Georgia and Victoria and others have, uh, have tuned in. And sometimes, um, sometimes Chris in California. Uh, so um, I'm just going to be back and forth because I'm a little nervous about this. Let's just see if it looks like I'm good. Um, people are checking in. Ann Smith's back at Blue Hawk Lake. She's come up for the summer. And she's got internet. Good job. Um, okay, so a few things kind of announcement-wise. Uh, we, uh, we are still doing the Sunday, sending out Sunday school stuff. Try to loosely kind of tie it to the, uh, the theme of the week. And Lily Ramsdale has been putting this together. She's doing such a wonderful job. Thank you, Lily. Um, three levels for different ages of kids. Uh, this week is God is our rock. God is our rock and uh, ties in with the theme today, which I think you'll pick up on as we as we go along. And of course, uh, it is legal now to uh, have a service, a regular service in a church, but uh, there are so many precautions to put in place. We haven't quite figured that out yet. There is a, a an official board meeting this Thursday at two o'clock via Zoom or telephone. So if you're on the official board and you haven't heard about that, or you know somebody that doesn't know about that, please let them know. We're trying to get the word out to everybody, and let them connect with me. And I, if they can't do internet, uh, they can figure we can do phone. So uh, let us know here at the office, and we'll we'll sort that out. Uh, what else? We've got a few celebrations just that have just happened. I'd just like to put a shout out to some of these folks. So Dan and Roberta McComb had their 60th wedding anniversary on June 25th. Congratulations to you, Dan and Roberta. 60 years, wow. Good job. Uh, Jim and Marilyn Frost had 54. They're catching up to Dan and Roberta on June 25th, same day. They got married the same day. Uh, congrats, congrats, Jim and Marilyn. I know you're, on the, you're watching today. And uh, let's see, Gary Matthews. Young Gary turned 80 on the 26th, which was what, Friday. And, of course, Jan Tedford turned, uh, I, we don't know what she turned. <laughs> so, but it's her birthday today, as some of you have already mentioned on our chat. So let's just sing happy birthday to, to Gary and Jan. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gary and Jan. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, guys. Um, okay, now this week we're doing a pr a, a, another prelude from, the, from John Menzies' Tinkling of the Ivories, and uh, it, this is a, let's, I'm going to check my settings here for a second, see how we're doing. Um, okay, nobody's squawking. And uh, this is a couple of pieces, one is going to introduce a, a song which we're going to sing, and uh, another song which we all often sing in uh, Inglesby and elsewhere. Um, I think we sing it in all the churches, actually. And I put the words with them, so we're not, I'm not going to sing along, but just so you can you can have a listen. Set your hearts and ready yourselves for some worship and time together with one another and with our Lord Jesus Christ.
Thanks, John. John Menzies. Menzies Melodies. Sweet, sweet sounds. Um, this is coming up on Canada Day. And Canada Day. Oh, so we have traditionally uh, sung O Canada in our churches. So we thought we'd do that today. Melissa has recorded it. We've sung it. We're going to sing it again. And with a little bit of background picture to sing along to and with. try to bring you up today on that. Darko Knezevic, Knezevic he's a, a, a musician that has often played with me when we do the multi-church groups and uh, he, he, he's he been a part of the West Guilford Baptist Church for quite a while. He had a, quite a serious stroke apparently some weeks ago so he's he's working on recovering uh, from that so uh, lots of prayers for Darko. And uh, we're going to pray for Maggie, Maggie uh, Thompson's nephew Curtis uh, Steve Wigan uh, is doing quite well, I understand, Karen, so uh, we'll keep praying for Stephen. I don't know if he's out of hospital yet. He was the one that was injured in a, 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 an accident in the forest when a tree fell on his uh, vehicle. Sheila Popple ended up with a broken ankle. I don't know if you've heard about that. So uh, she had uh, surgery in Lindsay last week, and as far as I know, she, she came home like the same day or something. So she's home. And Bob Heaps, which is Linda's, uh, the husband of Linda Heaps, uh, he has broken his hip. Eva Babs, I believe, is home. Uh, we should check into that, I'm not sure. And Hillary Eaton, which is Nancy's e niece, is off. She was. We've been praying for her. She was at a long-term care, one of the high-risk long-term care facilities in Toronto, and she's uh, she's done her, her turn there. So uh, our thanks, her thanks are to us all for the prayers and to God for her protection. Um, other prayers are ongoing. So uh, let us join our hearts in prayer. Ah, our Father, we thank you that you have made this wonderful, blessed earth on which we dwell. And you take care of us and provide for us. We thank you for the great gift of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, in whose name we gather today in order to learn of you and to draw near to you and find your grace in time of need. Lord, so we put ourselves in your hands as we worship. Lord, we, uh, we ask that you would guide all that we do, our thoughts, our hearts, that we might grow in love and grace, uh, understanding of the truth uh, in, in our walk with you. So we put ourselves in your care, Lord Jesus. Uh, fill us with your spirit this, this day. Lord, we bring many to you who are in need of your healing touch. We think of Darko Knezovich, of Curtis, Steve Wigan, Sheila Popple, Bob Heaps, Eva Babs, Brenda McKee, uh, Julie Goodwin and the family of Terry Goodwin, Gwen Atkinson and all the family of Fred Black, Sadie Lester and Lindsay Lester, Walt Griffin, Pete Robinson. Lord, we continue to lift our neighbor, the, uh, the U.S. of A., into your hands as they go through many strange times and difficulties, that you would help them and, and give them guidance and, and protection. We continue to lift to you all our leaders, both uh, in Canada and in, in uh, other nations, whether our Prime Minister, 
uh, Trudeau or Premier Ford, the local leaders, all those who are, who are to make, called to make decisions in a, in a difficult time, that you would give them wisdom and courage to do the right thing. Um, Lord, we lift all those in the front lines of uh, uh, the battle against this virus, and uh, those in long-term care facilities and hospitals, all those involved with that, plus those who have had to keep our essential services going and our food supply going. Lord, continue to protect, and, and we pray that you would bring an end to this uh, virus uh, in, our, in our world and how it's affecting us, that we might return to normalcy. We pray for vaccine, we pray for, but we also pray for healing for those who have been affected. Uh, Lord, so we, we put all of this in your hands. We lift our great country, Canada, to you this week as we celebrate it, and we are thankful to be living in such a wonderful place. We pray all this in your name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> okay, we've got a few picks, and uh, let's see if my camera's up and my sound's up. Yeah, check in, check in. <laughs> Jan Tidford's an aunt. She is. Happy Ant's Day. Um, I just made that up, by the way. Uh, I'm not sure if there is one. So i got a few picks. Where are we here? Picks, picks, picks. And a few things happening. Oh. I don't know how they got there. This is <laughs> this is maybe my family, my son Chris and his and Jen and Elijah and baby Henry, who is the heart patient from uh, Sick Kids Hospital, and they they have done a big fundraising thing for Jump Rope for Heart, and they had this was the day they finished, so they got uh, they got medals uh, for raising quite a quite a quite a bit of uh, funds for for heart research and uh, and cures, and this is. Isaac Griffin. He's uh, Walton, Walton Valerie's grandson. He's uh, uh, just graduated from high school in Fenton Falls with high honors. Congrats to Isaac and to all the family. Um, last week I was the men's breakfast, the last one of the spring, and uh, there will be another one hopefully back in September, but this, uh, we're off for the summer. And this is uh, Dr. Benoit uh, saying grace uh, before the meal in, in the isolated breakfast. And there he is, unsure of what that is in his hand. It's a tomato, Ben, a tomato. Uh, John Ritchie, celebrating uh, outside, enjoying his breakfast with his very strange t-shirt. Shh, nobody cares. Okay. <laughs> oh, here's Doug Beatty. And now this is very bizarre. There's a woman at the men's breakfast. I believe that's his daughter. And, of course, Jim Roberts. Not as flashy as the last one. He's, he doesn't have his tux on today, or the day of this. This was a week ago Saturday, so the 20th of June. And, oh, this is the one I missed uh, two weeks ago. This is Evie over in Sweden doing her craft on the Trinity. So that's got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit on those, those three hearts. And she does that together with... Uh, Nana over here in Canada, which is uh, Janice Benoit, and she's done her bit there uh, as they do they do these things together. So uh, through the internet, Sweden to Canada, very cool. And that's that's those guys again. So yeah, where's my camera? Um, I thought we'd do something a little bit different today. If there's any kids still watching, and somebody said to me, why don't we do a kids time? So we're going to try that. Uh, you'll have to let me know how this works out. Now, don't leave because I am actually going to stand up and get my guitar and stay there. Shift the camera up so you can see me. And then I'm going to play a little tune. Hey, uh, so this is um, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are safe. I may try to do this. So everybody knows that in baseball, when you when you get home, and you haven't been put out, you're safe. So we're just using that hand signal from baseball to, to signal that you're that the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. The name of the Lord, and they are safe. Let's try it. Blessed 
be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. The name of the Lord is a strong. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. They are safe. Glory to the name of the Lord. Another verse. Glory to the name of the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Most high. Glory to the name of the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it, they are safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it, they are safe. Holy is the name of the Lord, holy is the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it, they are safe. That's it! Well, let me know what you think. And I'm going to put the camera back down, put the guitar away, don't go away. Take two seconds. Yes, I should have a cameraman, I know, but I don't. Camera person. Okay. Okay, we are going to sing together a song that everybody knows, I hope. This is a song that's been a big favorite in all of the, uh, all of our three churches, <laughs> and we've been singing it for quite a few years now. I first heard it at camp, Joy Bible Camp, and brought it back, and it's been a, become a, quite a bit of a favorite for me and for most of us. Grace Alone. Oh. 
supplies. Strength unknown He will provide. Christ in us, our cornerstone. We will go forth through grace alone. Grace alone, which God supplies. Strength unknown He will provide. Christ in us, our cornerstone. We will go forth through grace alone. Time for our scripture reading. I should have told you about this in advance, but uh, Hebrews 12, anybody's got a Bible, they want to follow, through, follow along, just going to read it straight from here. It's not on the screen today, but uh, Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12. So that's kind of almost to the back of the Bible. Just a few few books back from Revelation. Uh, second last chapter, verses 22 to 29. Hebrews 12, 22 to 29. Great passage. Where is it to start here? Okay, you ready? But you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful, and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. May God add to our hearts the blessings from these readings, or this reading, this one reading today, of his word. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to mention. We are going back in Halliburton. We're going back next week, uh, starting in July, to our, our Mission of the Month. Uh, and uh, we will be presenting for a, the Mission of the Month, uh, Sleeping Children Around the World. So, Leslie Banner, I see you're watching today. So, we were hoping to get a video, perhaps, from Leslie. We'll see. I think she said she could. Uh, and I'll play that next week. To just get a little, she's been very involved and gone on trips with sleeping children around the world, so that will be very interesting. Leslie, uh, no pressure. So, <laughs> so that's happening. And, uh, and just a big thank you to people as you continue to support us. People have uh, been sending in their offerings and their uh, e-transfers and all that good stuff. So we just appreciate the, the support of this ministry and of our three churches to keep us going through uh, a strange time. So, um, yeah. So let, with that said, let us continue to worship the Lord as we present our offering. Oh, oh, boy, it's easy to lose track. Just a minute, just a minute. Good morning. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. Okay, let's sing again. Okay, I'm going to introduce this one. I, we, we probably sing this about once a year in our three churches. We have the, the three different hymn books that we had been using in the three churches. Each had a different version of it. 
uh, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, written by Martin Luther about 500 years ago. So it was the most famous of Martin. Now Martin Luther, for those of you who don't know, was kind of the, one of the major movers and shakers of what they call Protestantism or the Protestant Reformation. Uh, and he was actually, he started out as a Catholic monk, uh, priest, so, uh, but, you know, he had, he called for reform. And uh, this hymn that he, he wrote back in the day was, of course, written in German, became a bit of a rallying cry at the time of the Reformation. It's been used for various, uh, you know, kind of to rally people over the centuries, sometimes for not the best causes, but, uh, but it's just, it's pretty rich with uh, great, great teaching. Uh, you know, about our Christ's victory, really, over evil and, uh, and sin and death and all those things. And that in, even, even in the face of great obstacles, his power is, is far greater. So, that it, you know, some of it, I don't know, I hope you, you enjoy it well, and, and can, can sing along. A mighty fortress is our God. Robinson's been busy again with some creative uh, pictures uh, and this is kind of what she's got as an interpretation of I forgot to turn the mic up I did though okay so this is uh, kind of what she's hearing from our scripture today um, the shield of God the strength of God she's got angels up at the top 
top corners and it looks like some devils. Just kind of like in that last hymn we just read. And one's going, run! And the other one says, yikes! And the other one says, ah! Very good. Great. To, very good thematic picture for today. Where is my mic? So let's, uh, let's pray. I'll get my teleprompter fixed up here. Lord, we uh, thank you for this day and this your word and this chance to consider your truth. Uh, Lord, we look to you for strength in time of need, and you never fail us. And we thank you for that. Lord Jesus, you are the word of God, uh, the word made flesh. Lord, we thank you for your coming into this world, and for conquering sin, death, guilt, evil. Lord, so, uh, Lord, may we hear that, that word, that truth afresh today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So COVID-19, uh, ongoing, um, curve is not bad in Canada, um, but uh, that's kind of, and we're opening things up, so that's so good, but, you know, it means we need to be very cautious and uh, be very careful. It's, it's no joke, and it's no hoax. Um, I know two people fairly well who have lost close family members uh, due to uh, this disease. I had another. I have another friend um, who I won't mention, but my age, who got it. He and his wife both got it, and uh, uh, she was not bad. But he he was he didn't end up in the hospital, but he uh, he lost 25 pounds, and he was kind of getting his affairs in order. So he was probably as sick as he's ever been in his life by far, and it was over quite a few weeks. Uh, so it lasted a long time. So it, the the whole thing is uh, it's a shocker. And the thing is, we have our expectations built up due to years and years of consistent routines. I mean, schools always run through from September through to June, except not this year. They stopped abruptly in March, and people were said, told, yep, teach your kids at home, and, you know, there were helps. But that's, that's pretty different. And church, whoever heard of, you know, churches are always there to attend, and you go to your church service, and every Sunday, whenever you want, all year round. And they ended abruptly in March. Uh, so, who ever heard of such things in all our days? Um, who ever thought this would happen even in February? I mean, February, we're, you know, you know, kind of going on as usual, and then suddenly March comes along and boom, shutting it all down. So, I mean, it happened, but kind of before our day, there was, there was, there were, have been major quarantines like in the Spanish flu uh, back in the early uh, 20th century. So, but not in our day. Um, so our expectations have been shaken. I'm talking about things being shaken today. Our expectations are very much shaken and we're not quite sure what is coming down the pipes, what's going to be next. So today I want to talk about what cannot be shaken and uh, what is unshakable, and namely God. His promises, His love, the truth, His kingdom, God's kingdom. So let's take a look first of all at some unshakable truth. Uh, and it's, it's interesting, before we do that, that uh, we live in a climate of skepticism about the truth. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, everything's relative, and your truth, his truth, their truth. Uh, is there an absolute truth? And that skepticism is not such a new thing. In fact, uh, there's, a, there's a hint in the Bible, um, back in uh, the Gospel of John, that you know, the, that's kind of been the way of the world all along. Uh, Jesus before Pilate. So Jesus is before Pilate. I'm going to read you a little bit of, this is when Jesus is on trial. He says to him, Pilate, my kingdom, uh, Pilate asks, are you, you know, uh, what, what's this? Are you a king? Um, and he says, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest. Uh, but now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. I came into the world, Jesus said, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. So truth is a huge thing in the heart and mind and, uh, of Jesus. And he wants us to know the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Pilate says, Pilate asked, what is truth? So, clearly, still bewilderment about what is true, what is not, even back in the day. Now, supposedly, there's uh, fake news, right? 
that's a that's kind of a new thing. And, and, and to me, the, the expression fake news is a bit of an oxymoron because I've always, you know, my, my idea of news was someone's going to tell us what's happened <laughs> because we can't all be there. And so they are going to report the news. You know, this is what happened. And, you know, often it's got pictures, it's got, uh, it's got, uh, it's got eyewitnesses, those kinds of things. So we, we have credible evidence that this is what happened somewhere, some story. So that's news. So, so if it's fake news, that's kind of an oxymoron. Those two don't seem to go together. If it's fake, if somebody's telling us something that isn't true, that's a lie. <laughs> so, uh, hey, some thoughts about the truth. So we as Christians are called to believe many, many uh, seemingly outlandish things from the world's perspective. But these things are actually rock solid and unshakable. And they give us great confidence. The things of God, the things of Christ, the things of God's work. So, for example, let's take a look at this, this passage that, uh, that is before us today in Hebrews, uh, if you want to talk about seemingly outlandish things. <laughs> because, uh, so he says here, uh, he says, you, so he's talking to Christians, people who have put their faith in Jesus. He says, once you've done that, he says, you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. Interesting. The tense is, you have come. You've arrived there. It's happened already. So he's really talking about heaven. Uh, we use the word heaven, uh, the new heavens and the new earth. What, that is yet to, to unfold. But, but the kingdom of God, or heaven, is where we come to once we come to faith in Christ, somehow. So there's a truth that we need to stew on, stir around in our hearts a bit. You have come to Mount Zion. You have come. He repeats a, that that kind of verbiage, the, the use of the verb, uh, you have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. See them? They're there. Well, you have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. In festal gathering, another translation says. They're rejoicing in their worship of the living God. It's kind of like, you know, holy, holy, holy. They, they sing all the time, they, you know, they bow down and worship the Lord, and they, they worship along with us. To the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. I believe this just refers to those who, are, who belong to God, who belong to Christ. You have come to God, the judge of all people, to the spirits of, the, of righteous people made perfect. So we've, we've come together, we have come there to the, you know, to the spirits of those who have gone before and those who are, uh, who are with us now. So, so again, we are together because we are there together at, uh, at the New Jerusalem. Um, so even though we're isolated physically, we are, we are at the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God, according to this crazy truth here. Uh, to the spirits of righteous people made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. We're with Jesus, who, is, who mediates a new covenant. So the, this whole book, the book of Hebrews, it contrasts the old covenant, the covenant God made with Israel, to the covenant uh, God has made with uh, the followers of Jesus, to, you know, to uh, uh, the new Israel. And to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. So there's just some kind of cra wonderful, crazy uh, truth for us to grasp and, and believe and lay hold of. So I want to jump now to the last paragraph in this uh, little, little passage. I'm just going to read that to you again. It says, uh, Therefore, since we are, re we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. It's unshakable. So when we, we think about our world, it doesn't take very long to assess that it's pretty shakable. Um, let's let's think, for instance, of, of you know the the political world, and uh, a country that comes to mind is the United States of America next door. I mean, it's it's been kind of the the poster child of democracy and of uh, of strength and of freedom and of a just society. And boy, they are rocked to the core these days. I mean, they they have a constitution that's supposed to protect those freedoms. There's supposedly checks, there's checks and balances built in, uh, three, three different uh, areas of governance that, um, uh, 
you know, are to check and check on each other and eh, questionable as to how that's that's how well that's working. We need to be praying for them, but uh, you know, their political situation is kind of in disarray. It's being shaken, um, and Canada. Like this is this is the week we celebrate our country, but boy, we we need to always be prayerful for our country. It, it's uh, we're glad that it's we we have so much consistency and so much stability, but by the grace of God, we have that. And so we're we're called as Christians to always be prayerful for our leaders and for our country. Uh, and I think that's what we need to be mindful of this week, especially as as Canada Day rolls around again. Uh, so pray that uh, our freedoms might be protected and uh, justice may may be a thing in our land, um, and you know that that there would be stability and safety here. Uh, so, but we're shaken. We're shaken by the current circumstances. Now. The kingdom of Christ cannot be shaken. It cannot be. So then there's the economic world, which, you, boy, uh, the stock market's up and down like a yo-yo. People are probably kind of worried about pensions. Um, and, you know, people, businesses have had to close because they haven't been able to be open through COVID-19. Uh, the, the whole thing is kind of a mess. Our, our governments have gone into a lot of debt because they're trying to help us. And, you know, we're not sure what the meaning of all that is in the future. It's, a, it's an unknown still. Um, we, it's, it's been shaken. Our economic stability has definitely been shaken. Interestingly, Jesus said, uh, you know, as far as that's concerned, lay up your treasure in heaven, where, where moths do not uh, corrupt and thieves do not break in and steal. In other words, that treasure cannot be shaken. Invest in truth, you know, invest in love and faith and hope in Jesus Christ. And that cannot be shaken. The church is an institution. The church is an institution. So, well, you know, the kind of denominational churches of, of our world and our era, um, they have been shaken, shaken up. There's been, a, as I've often mentioned, there's been a huge moving away from it, and especially in the West, a decline in attendance and, and participation. Uh, and this, the mistakes we've made basically kind of have caught up with us. Uh, I mean, mistakes like judgmentalism, um, not being mission-oriented, being kind of inwardly focused, formalism, uh, too much emphasis on bureaucracy and an organization, division between various uh, arms of the church. You know, all those kinds of things which people look at and think, eh, I'm not sure if that's, you know, for me. You know, they've caught up to us. Uh, COVID-19 is causing us to totally rethink how we do church. We have been shaken. But the body of Christ, which is the invisible uh, body of Christ on earth, it's the way Christ represents himself on this earth, it's all those who have put their trust in Jesus and believe in what he did for us and uh, accept his, 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 his cross and his suffering and his forgiveness uh, and his grace. And we have... Uh, we have come to know the Father. We have been res restored and reconciled. We have, our hearts have been healed. We're the body of Christ on earth. That's not, has, is unshakable. Uh, Paul says in one of his letters to, to uh, I think it's Timothy, he says, I know whom I have believed, and I am sure that he is able to keep that which I have entrusted to him against that day. It's, it's great confidence. And we have an unshakable confidence in Christ. We belong to him. He never fails. He never forsakes. He uses everything for good. He is our solid rock. So, Paul, er, we don't know who, who wrote this, actually. I, see, I keep saying Paul, but the writer of Hebrews finishes this passage after he says, he says, we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Therefore, let us be thankful. That's the, one of the basic attitudes of the Christian heart, is to be thankful, humbly, humbly thankful to our God for, for life, and for his gifts, and for his, uh, his, his healing grace in our lives, his forgiveness. And his calling us to be his children, and, and uh, uh, transforming our hearts and lives to be like Christ. He says, let us be thankful, then, and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. Indeed. Let us pray. Lord, we... Uh, we praise you, we thank you for your grace. Lord, when we go through difficult times, we find that you are 
you are strengthening us, strength, strengthening us with a strength unknown. It's mysterious. Your spirit girds us up and, and gives us hope and, and keeps us at peace and even fills us with joy, Lord. We thank you that you do indeed use everything for good for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Lord, may our trust in you grow. Uh, you are unshakable and uh, you are our mighty, mighty fortress. And we put our trust and our confidence entirely in you in times of strangeness, times of uh, uh, indecision, times of um, uh, we don't know what's next. <laughs> so Lord, we, but we know that you are faithful. So for this, we praise you and thank you. We can put our trust in you. And we, we pray this and we, and we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us in prayer to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, let's get up a teleprompter. We're going to sing one more hymn, and uh, kind of, you know, let us worship the Lord with reverence and awe. But let's sing, Rejoice, the Lord is King. Let's, uh, I hope this, where is my king? Rejoice, the Lord is King, your risen Lord adore. Rejoice, give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. Jesus, the Savior, reigns, the God of truth and love. When he had purged our sins, he took his seat above. Lift up your hearts, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. God's kingdom cannot fail, Christ rules o'er earth and heaven. The keys of death and hell are to our Jesus given. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in glorious hope, for Christ the Judge shall come to glorify the saints for their eternal home. We soon shall hear the archangel's voice, the trump of God shall sound. Rejoice! That's it for this week. May you have a wonderful Canada Day and a blessed week and happy birthday, Jan, again. Uh, yeah. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us, both now and always. Amen. <laughs>